Now, one of the things that um, struck me reading your book was how the two hemispheres seem to have almost um, different wills, almost as if they're separate personalities. And correct me if I'm wrong. So, with the um, split brain experiments in the sixties, I think with Roger Sperry, he found that um, you know, with the split, uh, the corpus glossum being split or severed. Um, that if you presented information to one eye, which corresponds to the other hemisphere, then the that hemisphere wouldn't necessarily know what was going on the, on the other side. It, you know, it literally, one one side wouldn't know what the other was doing. Was that right? Is that well, yes, with the caveat that it's not one eye but one visual field, right? Because um, the visual field, say, the right visual field of both the left and right eyes. It feeds into the left hemisphere and vice versa. But yes, that's right. And so there was um, there were some very puzzling findings. You know, after the operation for a few months, and it usually settled down after a few months, but for a while, people would find themselves going to do something and what with one hand and the other hand saying no and putting picking it up and taking it away. One woman went to the cupboard to get out a dress and the other hand took it back into the cupboard and took out a different one. And so, you know, uh, th th this has captured people's imagination. As I say, in the end, and after not too long, it tends to settle down, but it does focus one's mind on the fact that each hemisphere on its own can have something like a personality. And I... That may sound rather odd, but Ono Gunther Kuhn, who, is, who won the most prestigious prize in Germany for his work on lateralization, um, remarked that I probably write about that. And what I mean is that, after all, they have different goals, different aims. Um, the reason we have one hemisphere looking out for predators and for conspecifics and the general picture, and another one just, you know, as it were, focusing on the immediately important element, uh, suggests that they have different goals, they have different um, interests, if you like. And they have different emotional timbre as well. Um, the left hemisphere uh, is the, the hemisphere that is most implicated in anger, for example, mm. um, and the right hemisphere in a degree of sorrow. So they, they do have different uh, terms, rather like a person. So it's not entirely wrong to think of them as mm. two persons, but it is also not entirely right. <laughs> this is one of those cases in which one has to have both and. And that actually is one of the differences, if I might say so, between the two hemispheres. In a way, the right hemisphere is able to do both and. The left hemisphere tends to want either or. And this has a knock-on effect on their relationship. So the left hemisphere thinks it's either I've got it or the right hemisphere's got it. The right hemisphere is perfectly happy that both should be involved. So they seem to have different agendas. They have different agendas. If not entirely different personalities. Yes. 